Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adi and today we are here with week 5 of the XDL. If you didn't watch last week's match against Ashton, you should pause this video right now and go and watch it because it is one of the craziest matches I have played and I am about to spoil the result. Okay, so we are 4-0 and on the season and Ashton was the first player to even take a game off of us. So I gotta ask again, who will be the one to finally take down? the Flagstaff Flygons. This week's challenger is Fevzi, and you know, I feel like every week I look at the pairing and I'm like, it doesn't get tougher than this, and then it does. This league is just stacked. I mean, if you don't know, Fevzi is one of the best players in Europe. He actually just qualified for Players' Cup Grand Finals out of Europe. Uh, I was actually thinking about stealing his team that he would end up bringing because uh, he was using it on stream, and so I ended up watching a lot of his stream to learn how to play the team, and let me tell you, his streams are great. They are really chill. He's a really nice guy. He answers like every question. Uh, he's also best known for winning the biggest Pokemon tournament ever, the uh, Champions Cup last spring. So you should definitely check him out. Of course, links are in the description down below. But before I jump into my scouting report for him uh, and the team I'm bringing, I figure I should show off my team. I, I realize that unless you paid really close attention to the video in week one against Colin, you probably have forgotten all the Pokemon that I have at my disposal. So here is my original draft. After week one, I dropped the Mr. Rhyme for Jinx, and that was a like-for-like -like replacement. They fill very similar roles as Ice Types and Fake Out users, but Jinx has Lovely Kiss and Dry Skin, which are two really useful traits that I have put in work in both weeks that we brought it. The way I see it, if your tier four picks are requiring your opponent to game plan around them, then they've already done their job. Uh, we saw Poltergeist do that last week, uh, and we'll see Jinx do it a couple times in the past, and hopefully again this week. The other change that just happened this week is that we dropped Darmanitan for Nidoking. Darm has never come to any games, and while we are missing a fire type now, we really just need special attackers. There will probably be more trades soon, I probably want to pick up a fire type at some point, but we are capped at 4 total transactions, um, but there are a couple Pokemon on the team right now that may not be pulling their weight, and so we can probably swap them out, especially with the addition of Nidoking. Anyways, with that out of the way, here's what Fevzi has on his team. He is 2-2 two two on the season with wins against Steph and Ashton and losses to Viz and Manby. Uh, and I think his losses came up because of preparation issues. That's not to say he doesn't prepare by any means, like he very clearly puts in work for his matches. But his loss to Viz was just because he didn't invest enough speed in Pokemon, I think to like, outspeed Alakazam. Uh, and against Manby, he said in his prep video that uh, I can't prepare for everything, so I won't prepare for Steelix, basically. Uh, and so, of course, he lost to a weakness policy, Steelix. On the other hand, when he does get to play the game, he is still one of the best players in the world. He plays very technically sound Pokemon, he doesn't make mistakes. So, especially if we don't blow him out, he is going to be a very hard player to actually beat. One thing that I've been learning about draft leagues is that it's actually a lot harder to team build when you feel like you have a good matchup, because your opponent can then really easily predict what you're going to run and pull out some tricks to stop you. That's kind of what happened for me last week against Ashton, where I felt like I had an awful matchup and then pulled out with this light clay poltergeist that really put in work. And this time, I feel like I'm in the opposite role. I feel like I have a fantastic matchup against Fevzi's Pokemon. The addition of Nidoking means his bulky steel types will have a natural counter. Uh, Kabalion especially is really bad if it can't get a beat up. Uh, and we have Togekiss to stop that and also Fake Out to stop that. His other main attacker is Spectrier, and obviously that struggles with bulky normal types, and we do have a Snorlax. We also have Tapu Bulu for a potential Indeedee, uh, and Gyarados really struggles into Thunderous, and so it was pretty easy to build a team that is positive into his main modes. That being said, he has some tools that are going to be really difficult for us to deal with. First off is Tangela. Uh, it has an Eviolite, and that makes it really physically bulky. Its special bulk leaves a lot to be desired, but our team has very few special attackers. Now, the addition of Nidoking does help, and it's still not going to enjoy taking a max airstream from like a Thunderous, but that Pokemon is still potentially a problem. It also has Redirection with Rage Powder, and it has Sleep Powder, so it can get really annoying really quickly. The other strategy that in testing was actually really difficult was the Archeops Weezing, and now... I've lamented about our weakness to rock types before, and we have Nidoking to help out, but Archeops can power through our redirection, which is Togekiss, and we struggle with his redirection, and so he can outpace everything on the team after an airstream and you know get rock falls off to boost defenses, the exception being Thunderous, which does outspeed it by a point and can't outright KO it. Now, he hasn't actually brought them on yet, but he has made two transactions on the season, and he hasn't dropped it yet, so I would really expect him to bring it this week, because like, 
why else would it be on the team? You know, like he's got to bring it eventually. Uh, and this seems like the perfect chance to give it a test run. So I actually think that I had to make some decent adjustments just to account for the fact that he could bring the Archaeops Weezing. Now, jumping into my team, it is pretty standard. Uh, again, this is the strange part about feeling like you have the matchup advantage. He's never really going to be too surprised by my sets outside of like maybe one, but that's fine. The, uh, the Thunderous and Togekiss are both relatively unpredictable Pokemon inherently. They have a lot of sets they can run. Uh, the Togekiss is a bulky support set with a Babiri Berry. He has two Steel types, and so if they start clicking Steel Spike, they can get very annoying. Uh, I only have the Nido King to really beat them at that point. And so uh, the Babiri Berry helps my Togekiss maybe get a Yawn off onto one of them, or just redirect for two turns. Obviously, he has Beat Up mode, uh, and so I have Follow Me to really stop that. It's also EV'd to live a jolly Life Orb Diggersby Max Strike. Um, Thunderous is the standard Defiant set, and so Spectre can run Will-O-Wisp, and so I wanted the Lumberry to, to make sure that it isn't neutered immediately. Also, the Tangela can have Sleep Powder, so uh, it might have utility against that as well. At the end of the day, the Thunderous uh, at plus one outspeeds the entire team and lets any other Pokemon on my team, well, other than two slower Pokemon, uh, outspeed his entire team as well, and so it really forces him to click Tailwind, or Trick Room to outspeed me, which means he's not exerting pressure for a couple turns, which is, you know, all I can really ask for. Whimsicott doesn't really do much offensively. I guess Indeed he does, but like, I have some pretty good Trick Room on, so is he really going to click Trick Room against me? I don't know. That being said, if Whimsicott had Trick Room, that also wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it's really hard to play around that while also respecting all the other things it can do, but again, hopefully my uh, Trick Room tools can make sure that he doesn't ever feel comfortable clicking that. Uh, regardless, Thunderous is probably the primary Dynamax, and the onus is on him to find a way to stop it, because if he just runs the, again, the standard stuff, I think I'm going to be able to run through his team with Thunderous. The other Pokemon that is uh, the fast is Nidoking. I think it's a pretty standard Nidoking. I actually ran Shadow Ball on it for a while until I realized I needed to hit Archeops, um, and so I replaced that with Ice Beam. It, it's mostly there's Sludge Bomb Tangela, and Earth Power the Heatran, and Cabalion, and Weezing, uh, and now... Sadly, this thing doesn't actually hit that hard. Even with Life Orb, even with Sheer Force, I always feel like the damage is just a little bit lacking. Uh, I needed it to be modest because otherwise it just like really doesn't do damage. And uh, it is max speed. And the reason for max speed is because I think the benchmark that Febzu will want to hit for his Pokemon is a uh, 130 speed. Uh, sorry, excuse me, 135 speed. Because that allows things like Diggersby or Heatran or Gyarados to outbeat a plus one speed Thunderous in Tailwind. And... By hitting 137, I am forcing him to speed creep that number by a few points. Uh, anyways, I was always going to hit 134 speed because that outspeeds Spectre at plus one speed if I give my Pokemon a max Airstream boost, and so that's just a few more points anyways. However, I think the most important Pokemon on the team is actually going to be Jinx. The ice coverage is really good into his entire team outside of his two steel types. Hitting Weezing, Tangela, Archeops, Diggersby, and Whimsicott are all just really valuable. Uh, fake Out is also really good into Whimsicott. It forces him to run Protect, or else I can just Fake Out Max Airstream to get rid of it. Uh, and once Jinx is at plus one speed, it threatens every single Pokemon on his team with Lovely Kiss, unless he was running a, like, a Lumberry on something. Uh, at which point, again, like he is just putting a lot of respect on my tier four pick. Uh, we are max speed modest, because you need to be modest to KO Max Diggersby with a Max Airstream into an Ice Beam, uh, and that did come up in testing. And Trick Room also just enables the Stack Attacka and the Snorlax if he does find a way to effectively outpace us. Now, I might regret not having Expanding Force, especially if he brings in Didi, or the Weezing becomes problematic, but I think all these moves are really good, and so it's really hard to drop any of them. And we're also, uh, we're also oblivious this week instead of Dryskin, because I don't think he brings the Gyarados, and even if he does, Gyarados has 80 other ways to KO Jinx, but Oblivious gets around Taunt from Spectrier, which could be really valuable if we need to set up Trick Room or just click Lovely Kiss. And then moving on to the Trick Room mods on the team, the first is the good old Curselax. It is very similar to what we ran last week. And I think if he tries to slow the game down with mods that really don't do a whole lot on their own, like Whimsicott or Weezing or Tangela or even Support Spectrier, then Snorlax can very easily get a boost or two. And obviously, after two defense boosts, this thing gets really difficult to KO. Uh, it also tanks his two best special attackers' attacks, like Spectrier can't really hit it and Heatran struggles against it because of Thick Fat. Uh, Facade is really good because he can burn us very easily with either Spectrier or Weezing. And then the Lariat hits Spectrier because it needs to actually respond to Spectre, it can't just sit there and wall it. Uh, and Hammer Arm gets around something like a Shaka Berry or an Air Balloon on a Heatran or Cabalion. We do have two ground types, so I suspect he's going to tech out a little bit for that. And this thing in general is just so hard for him to kill. If he's not exerting pressure on it at all times, it's going to get one or two boosts, and then it's going to win the game from there. 
And finally, the last Pokemon on the team is the Stakataka. This was not on the team until I started losing to the Archaeops in testing, uh, and his common mode there was the Archaeops Tangela mode, otherwise Archaeops just goes down to a Thunderous Max Electric. And once it gets below half health, he can always go into Weezing to ignore Defeatist, but until then he really doesn't need the Weezing. And so I figured I should do something to actually be able to play the game in front of Tangela, uh, and that's going to be the Stack Attack. Now, obviously, this thing murders Archeops, uh, can tank max Airstreams and max Rockfalls, and if he has max Quake, I can live that if I Dynamax as well. It also uh, it has safety goggles because it can't actually hit the Tangela very effectively, and so this way it can't get redirected and it can't get sleep powdered, and it has a way to outright KO the Archeops. I think if we do this once, he's going to be turned off from the mode altogether because it is a pretty linear mode. And once uh, Stack Attacka gets going, it's going to be really hard to stop because it's going to get defense boosts. Um, it's a pretty good Dynamax on its own, but it does really struggle against the Heatran. The, the Heatran almost always is Shuckaberry or Air Balloon, so I, even though I have Max Quake on it, uh, it is a mod that could very easily you know, tank one of those with the Shucka and then uh, hit back really hard and KO it with the Max Quake. Uh, I'm actually EV'd to live a, uh, an Earth Power from full health if I have Sandstorm up or if I have one special defense boost. So I could potentially win the end game despite that. But you know, the real way I beat Heatran is with the Nido King, with the Snorlax, potentially even with Jinx if I put it to sleep. And so I'm, I'm gonna be more reliant on those if I do end up going with the stack attack on mode. Uh, now, I kind of do wish I had the Tapu Bulu to change terrain in case he has Ndidi. Um, I kind of wish I had the Urshifu because Urshifu paired with Thunderous is going to rip through his team. But I think these six give us the best chance to win no matter what he brings. And that is really all I can ask for. Okay, we are back. We are queued up against Fevzi. Um, it's gonna be a good battle. It's uh, I'm nervous, dude. He's such a good player. It's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun. Um, as per usual, if you are here from another channel, if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe uh, because uh, it's gonna be a lot of great content, a lot of team reports coming out from Players Cup Four. There's been three from this past week, three more upcoming. Check that out if you like. Uh, if you're from Fevzi, you know I know how much you like listening to good players talk about Pokemon. So. Uh, I'm sure you'll like uh, what you're going to see in this upcoming week from me. But jumping right into it, we did not see the Archeops. I was really expecting to see it. Um, but uh, there is the Weezing. The Weezing is a little problematic, right? I do have the Nido King for that. Uh, the Weezing cannot come with the Digger Speed, right? Because the Digger Speed just doesn't get to do anything with the Weezing on the field. So we can kind of figure out one of the two. There's the Tangela. Tangela was scary as well. Um, Digger Speed and Heatran make me really not want to bring Stack Attack. That was really just for the thing. For the uh that mode but the archaeops mode but the snorlax is still very good um the snorlax gets to do stuff uh like very relevant stuff um i guess the stack attack does help against no i can't i can't bring it so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna lead with the two that i thought i was gonna lead with um so the thing is now he can max strike which is a little scary uh and i can't really stop him so maybe i have to do something else um let's see i still want okay i want nito in back and I think I want the Snorlax. Togekiss is also really good, but like, he's got a lot of spread moves. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm gonna go Snorlax in back. And I think that's gonna say that's gonna end game effectively into a lot of his Pokemon. Uh, the Tangela is gonna be tough. Um, I guess that's what the Nido's for. The Nido and the Thunderous are gonna help versus that. But uh, whew, this, is, this is gonna be an interesting one. Okay, so we got Dig, Spec, Tangela, Weezing, um, Heatran, and I forget the last one. Is he going to show me? No, okay. Okay, Digger Speed Tangela. Uh, really should have seen this coming. D Digger Speed is going to do uh, a boatload of damage here. It, it really is just a very powerful Pokemon. Um, I don't think it KOs Thunderous unless he goes for the Rockfall, but I also don't have a great switch into the Rockfall. Um, I guess I could fly. Like, fly is not unreasonable. Um, I, I, he might need to max strike, potentially. Um, if I'm trading my Dynamax for the Tangela, that's really negative, right? Uh, so I don't want to do that. Um, even if I go up max Airstream and then I'm just faster with Jinx, um, maybe that's worthwhile? What is it? What's his last mod? Indeedy, right? Okay, Indeedy was also tough for the, uh, Pokemon endgame. I can also just switch out, um, but that's really risky, too. Oh, man, this is tricky. This is tricky. There's a lot of options here. Um... I think I am. I think I'm going to switch out and go for the Ice Beam. I expect the Rock Ball. If he goes for a Strike, then I definitely misplayed. Um, I could have gone for Lovely Kiss, I guess. But yeah, I think that's just like... 
my Dynamax is going to be way more valuable if I get to just like click an airstream freely. Uh, if I get to like airstream ice beam into digger speed, that's huge. Um, unless he clicks max strike, and he has to click max strike into a thunderous that could very easily live the attack, right? So dig Tangela is the game one lead. Digger be Dynamaxed. Okay, let's see what he goes for. Uh, maybe should have ice beam into digger speed in case of the protect, but we just did the rage powder, so that's good. Like airstream, uh, airstream and ice beam into digger speed would have KO'd it. So um, yeah, uh, let's see how this does. Nice, nice. That's just outright KO. Very good, very good. Um, so now the Thunderous Dynamax is really safe with either of these two Pokemon next to it. We do see the Max Strike come out, so um, this Neo King is just going straight down. Um, but that's actually okay, because Jinx is going to outspeed everything after an Airstream, other than the Spectrier, and uh, that's still fine because I am just still. Yeah, so now I get to go back into Thunderous, basically. Uh, the one thing that is a little scary is the. Uh, actually, the Indeedee is less scary now that I've lost my Pokemon. Uh, Weezing could be... No, Weezing can't be back, right? Again, he just loses huge power, and then he doesn't do any damage. So it's actually totally fine. Um, even though we can, like, max strike safely without uh, proccing my Defiant with Weezing on the field, um, he, he, doesn't, he does, like, half damage. So, like, who cares at that point, you know? Uh, so one funny thing. Uh, if you watch my uh, Wonder Trade Topping series, I got a French Rillaboom. Uh, and it's called Gorythmic, and I've been using the French Rillaboom ever since then just because it's such a cool name. And so I've started doing that for my other Pokemon too, getting foreign language versions of the Pokemon that have cooler names. Um, in particular, mostly German names, but Fepsi is German. So like, these names are just normal to him. I'm sitting here like, yeah, well, I got a, I got a cool name for my, um, for my Jinx, for my, um, for my Thunderous, and he's just like, oh, these are just normal names, I'm sure. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Um, the Airstream Ice Beam is going to outright KO the Stinger Speed. I'm just not going to let it get an attack off uh, unless it goes for a uh, a Max Guard, at which point I just get to do it again next turn, really, right? Like, uh, the, the it, I mean, it could potentially just fade two of my Dynamax turns uh, by switching out, but, like, there isn't really a great switch in now that he trains on the field. And the uh, I should not speed the Heat Train with Jinx as well. Um, it has to, I think, maybe max speed timid i don't think it does i think i'm just max speed modest right and i have a sash so like who cares uh even if it doesn't i need to, and i did see that i outsped the digger speed which is the important part okay so this means that digger speed is adamant it would have to be no hold up that's for nito king uh the, the the jinx should outspeed it normally no matter what i think it is like 137 uh 130 141 max or something like that and i'm only like 145 let's see the max card no, no max guard. So ice beam should KO. I did, I did, I did run modest jinx specifically so that this would KO because I didn't think it would KO otherwise, or at least in testing it came up that it didn't KO otherwise. If he is very bulky, and that might have been like less damage than I was hoping for. Um, if he's very bulky, then he might live it. Okay, but good. No, that goes down. Very good. Yes, yeah, so Dickersby goes down. We he traded back. Um, and then heat wave comes out. Okay, sure. Uh, so that obviously does bring it down to Sash. No surprise there. Oh, we saw the Air Balloon. Um, no no Cabalion. So, like, he just decided Air Balloon was better than Shaka Berry, which is probably fair, right? I think that Nido can probably just outright KOs, even if it's through Shaka Berry. Uh, it's a very powerful Pokemon. Um, and now we see the uh, the Weezing as the last Mon. Um, so, I don't really want to reveal my Lumberry. Um, how do I lose? How do I lose? How do I lose this game? Um, I want to... Ah, it's so weird this Weezing. Um, I can Lovely Kiss Heatran. Um, I can Max Knuckle Heatran, but then I reveal Lum, and I don't really want to do that. Uh, if I Airstream Ice Beam the Weezing, I probably knock it out. Um, and then I can, like, hit it again, and then just guarantee that my... Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna target down the Weezing. And then say that Snorlax is gonna to clean up the game. Um... Yeah, because the Weezing does protect. No, I, I, I probably could have read into that. I probably could have, like, Max Knuckled, but, you know, um, I don't think I need to. The, the Snorlax has moves that do enough damage without it. Um, and I didn't want to reveal Lumberry for as long as possible, um, if at all possible. I also could have Lovely Kissed the Weezing, uh, the the, uh, the Heatran, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I think this game is... Actually, uh, it's it's a little tricky now because he can Will-O-Wisp the Snorlax, and that gets annoying. But um, that's a good dodge. That's a good dodge. Just taking less damage is very valuable in general. Um, what is he going to do? He is going to... Okay, there's the leftovers, or the black sludge. Um, so here the only thing is that my uh, thick fat is gone uh, because of the, the, the ability. 
right? And so I don't get to do thick fat things. Um, I can maybe just like, I can probably just double the Heatran with a, a Max Knuckle superpower into into close combat, uh, into, sorry, not close combat, Max Knuckle uh, hammer arm into another attack. I don't think, I think I need to take more turns to KO the Weezing, but if he burns me, then I get to facade and that's still fine. Um, this may be throwing. I don't think it's throwing. Like, Knuckle into, into Hammer Arm is KOing unless it protects. And then I get a superpower off the next turn unless it gets a double protect. So I think this is fine. Like, I am taking a full power heat wave, unfortunately. That's a little sad, but you know. Yeah, so superpower will KO the next turn. And he needs to, like, what? Heat wave into Sludge Bomb might pick it up, but then. I am relying on this Snorlax end gaming the Weezing, but I think that's fine. Stockpile. Okay, sure. That's fine. Um, I'm taking this KO and I have Dark Slary on Snorlax, so I'm just gonna to do enough here. Um, the Hammer Arm does not miss. That was also a lose possibility. Um, that's good. Okay. And so now I get to start uh, Wild Charge, Dark Slaryating. Um, Larry just ignores the defense boosts. He gets to uh, potentially, like... Do I have to timer stall? I don't want to, right? Like, that's what I should be doing in theory, but I don't think that the game's lasted long enough for me to uh, be able to pull that off. Um, so I think I just get to... Wild Charge puts it Slunch Bar range, but, like, whatever. Or I can fly and then curse um, and get to plus six that way, because uh, then he has to protect all my flies um, rather than just, like, get to Sludge Bomb me for free. So that's something. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, do I want to reveal curse? I don't. I think I have to. Um, Bye, curse. Lariat is. I should probably just be calculating this at this point. Um, I am gonna curse though. If he if he wisps, he wisps. I don't think he has room for the the move set. Um, so here's the wheezing. Uh, it's a plus one. Toxic! Oh, oh shit, okay. I did not consider that as an option. Um, but I think that, so he's gonna protect on the fly, and then I'm going to get, oh. Wait. Did that? I did, I did not know that's, so, okay, so the new mechanic is that Toxic can never miss from a poison type. I did not realize that hit through fly. That's crazy. When did that happen? Um... I also want to double check. I don't. I think I thought I saw neutralizing gas, but like I might have just been mistaken, right? It might just be levitate. Uh, anyway, so here is the uh, what is very likely to be a um, a protect if it has it. So I'm just gonna curse here, uh, get the get the extra attack off, and then go for the. Um, okay, no, he just didn't. Okay, that's fine. So I do have darkest lariat, and at this point I'm gonna be at plus three. And if he doesn't have a wisp, then it's fine. Um, there's a toxic. Like I don't think he has an actual attacking move. Um, otherwise he would just, like, sludge bomb that slot and it would KO. But, you know, at this point, um, Facade might be better than Lariat, but Lariat is probably just better. Oh, no, Lariat, okay, so if he doesn't have Will-O-Wisp, Protect, Stockpile, Toxic, he could have Protect, he could have, he probably has Protect. He has to Toxic Protect things. Um, but at this point, I, I should probably just, like, calc my Snorlax set. That's just what's important here. Um, I'm at plus three attack. The Darkest Larry is going to do 51 to 76. Wow, that is so little. Oh my goodness. Um, but at this point, I am just going to Wild Charge Larry. I think that should KO. Um, plus four, I don't do actually that much more damage. Um, yeah, so we're just going to Larry it here. Uh, if he has, like, if he has Wisp, then I'm still, like, winning with Facade, right? But there's the Protect. So we just see all four moves. There is no attacking move on this thing. Um... Okay. Sure. Um, I think I think this game is just like pretty much wrapped up at this point. Um, uh, even if I go down to Wild Charge, I'm still doing enough damage, such that uh, Dark Slary it should pick up this KO. Um, maybe, maybe not. Like even if I don't, then he has to Toxic, and then I get to Facade, and Facade does more damage, so it should be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's in range. That's in range for Lariat, uh, based on the count. Oh, clear smog. Oh, shit. Wait, what? 
Protect stockpile? Oh, I, I would protect down twice. Damn, I'm stupid. I'm dumb. That's what's going on. I'm just dumb. Shit, do we lose? Okay, then. Um, so the downside is, he doesn't actually get to KO. Uh, he gets to slowly KO this thing. Um, so he has to protect this turn, right? I'm going to wild charge anyways, because why wouldn't I? Uh, and then I am going to curse, just to get my plus one on his protect turn. Um, and then he has to attack me. I get to facade. Uh, facade, does, does facade do more if I'm at neutral? If I'm at neutral, Larry does 20 to 25, and facade does 17 to 20. Um to plus one, so... And that that did seem like the... the Larry did do about 20-25, right? Yeah, so it maybe it had been even done a little more, but you know. Um, he's recovering about... He's recovering one... He's recovering one-eighth every two turns, and I'm going to be doing uh, a little more than that every turn, so I should be able to just pick him up with Darkest Lariats from here. Um, he might be able to timer. No, he doesn't get to timer. I, he's just way lower on health than I am. I still have a Citrus Berry available. He hasn't seen that yet, but you know. Um, and if he goes for a, uh, a Toxic, then I get to start facading. Um, that's going to do a lot more damage, so you know. Um, he maybe even doesn't get to protect because he has to get clear smog. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I think the two Larry is going to pick it up from here. Uh, after like four turns of recovery. So that's that. Um, maybe I'm supposed to timer him. <sighs> Am I supposed to timer? I don't like timering when I'm like streaming because it's you know not very compelling content. But I don't think I get to. I don't think I get to, to curse like I wanted to. I think I just have to larry it and say he's gonna to misplay. But yeah, there's the toxic. So now facade should do more. Um, yeah. So now facade's doing about forty percent total to, to plus one. Um, even if it gets to plus two, I should be fine. Um, so he has to string together some protects to have a chance here. Uh, do I reveal facade? I haven't actually shown it yet. Um, but I don't want to lose. Is the thing, right? So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click it so that he. I'm just gonna click it. Like you know, like he's he's gonna protect. He's gonna he's gonna try to get triple protects or whatnot. But you know, at this point. Um, especially with my Citrus Berry. I don't again, don't really want to reveal the Citrus Berry, but like, whatever. Facade is picking it up. I should win the game one. I don't want to like play too cautiously at this point because I don't want to somehow like throw the game away, um, be it on like timer potentially, if he gets protects, stick, strings to protect together or whatnot. Um, we're just taking the KO when we can. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's a game. That's, that's the... This wheezing is, it's a cool set. It's going to be annoying, but like, if I just keep my, wait, I'm trying to remember if I saw neutralizing gas, I'll have to check next time it's on the field. Because if it isn't, okay, no double, because that should do it. Because uh, if it is levitate, that's kind of funny. Because um, that lets it bring it with Diggersby, right? But also, uh, I think it is levitate. I must be, I, I must have just missed it. Because also that heat wave did not do... That's probably the calc to check. Heatran. Uh, modest. 252 special attack. Um, heat wave. Sorry, I'm trying to click buttons at the same time. Um, the heat wave's doing 11 to 13. I don't remember how much it did either. And okay. Uh, this is this is another reason why, I mean, playing on showdown is like kind of gives you an advantage there where you can just like check <laughs> and so maybe i was supposed to um i, I definitely need to keep track of that better because i i really should be paying attention to this i should be paying attention to neutralizing gas versus uh versus levitate um i didn't even think about the fact that it could be it could be gas um but let's see so the okay so if i have if i have stack attack in back this wheezing never wins the game, right? It just, it can't do any damage to anything. Uh, it can't, it has stockpile, clear smog, toxic. Um, and I don't actually have great ways to KO it back. Um, but I, it doesn't matter. It, it just, I win on timer, if nothing else. Um, so he doesn't have a whimsicott, so I didn't actually need to lead what I led. 
Uh, but I don't have great ways to overpower the Heatran either, so I think I still need Nido King. Um, I liked Thunderous on lead, even though Diggersby is a problem. Um, I just revealed that I can immediately get rid of Tangela. Um, he, Tangela could protect too, right? Like, I could just uh, go for the immediate KO onto... Uh, I, need to K uh, I don't really have time either, but Thunderous, week 5 against Fevzi, against um, Diggersby, uh, Dynamax, Dynamax, Giga Impact is doing... It's, it's a roll to KO. It is a roll to KO. Um, so I think I get to do the same thing, but this time the uh, the stack attack is going to come in back here, along with the, the Neo King. Um, I might regret that. Snorlax is really good into the Spectrier specifically, right? Like, that's where it's really going to shine. Um, whereas now, if I just have to, like, overpower the Spectrier, uh, it might be a little more difficult, but... Uh, We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I've, I have a good feeling about this. Uh, I beat the Adidian back too, a little better. I mean, there's the Spectrier Diggers Beam. So this should be fine, right? Like, uh, realistically, I don't think he can KO the Thunderous, barring like. What can he? What can he do? He can Max Strike into Rock Slide. We pick it up, I think. And so I don't want to play too defensively around that. Um. We saw that Ice Beam should just outright KO this Diggersby. The Focus Sash is probably on the Spectrier. Maybe on the Diggersby, honestly. Wouldn't surprise me. It could be Quick Attack to get around my Jinx. Faking out the Diggersby is like a really bold play. It is It is super uh, risky. Um, so I think I'm going to do the, the, the Brain Dead play of just like Airstream Ice Beam um, and see how he tries to punish that. Uh, like, he didn't dynam- or oh, he dynamax Diggersby. If he dynamax Diggersby, oh, and then if he snarls, he will live, right? That's the, that's the, that's what he's going for. No, he doesn't live, because if he snarls, he has to be slower than Thunderous and Snarl. That's the way he gets around this, if he, if he maxed the Diggersby. If he didn't max the Diggersby, you know, what do I know? Um, but otherwise, if he snarls, I just get to buy it, and I'm fine. Uh, but there is the Diggersby max, okay. So it could be Max Guard, maybe? Um, max Guard into Wisp would do it, and then he gets to, to Wisp a second time, but then he risks, like, just missing. Um, he risks a Lovely Kiss coming out. Uh, those are all things that he has to, like, genuinely be concerned about. He, he risks me targeting the Diggersby. Uh, let's see. There's a Shadow Ball, so that's fine. Like, I'm just gonna KO this Diggersby. There's a Life Orb on Spectrier. Right, so this KO'd last time. It KO'd in testing. If he has more bulk than usual, then this might be a roll. But, let's find out. There we go. Dynamax gone. That's that's a really good sign, right? Because now I also just outspeed this uh, Spectrier with both of my Pokemon. Um, I mean, it's going to be really hard for him to win the game from this point, I think. We'll see what he brings in. I think that, like, I'm trying to figure out what he could have in the back that would that would deal with this from here, where I just, like, have immediate pressure onto the Spectrier. Um, but yeah, not overthinking things there. Like, I have a tendency to do, I do have a tendency to be like, what's the biggest brain play that my opponent could do that would bail them out of the situation when I'm in a favorable spot? Um, okay, so there's the Tantula. I'm actually really unworried about Tantula. Um, I could max guard, but he didn't actually do enough damage to KO, so I'm just going to double the Spectrier, um, and he has to hit multiple Sleep Powders to do anything about it. Um, if he Rage Powders, then he goes down. Like, this should be... This should be pretty clean here. Um, Tangela does protect. Okay, so yeah, like, the, the I think the way he was getting out of that was, like, making very ballsy plays at that point, like, making very hard reads. Um, and so me playing safe, the Tangela wasn't pressuring the Thunderous, and Thunderous was my win condition. If the Jinx goes to sleep with Sleep Powder, like, is that really a big deal if he was, like, to protect Spectrier and Sleep Powder? Um, again, couldn't do it into Thunderous. And so that's going to really, uh... I mean, this this really should just clean up the game from here, you know? Uh, uh, I don't think there's any... Could Weezing in back? I, I, I pay attention if he brings in Weezing to see if it's a clear smog or not. But remember, Weezing actually has no way to hit Stack Attack, so I always beat that. Um, but yeah, there that is. Um, so I am going to just go for the... Uh, I think I go for Knuckle here because we saw that... I think I go for Knuckle because we saw that the uh, Ice Beam KO'd the, the Tangela. 
Um, but we also saw that he had Protect, Stockpile, uh, Toxic, Clear Smog, so absolutely no way to hit the stack attack up. Um, did he get the double? He got the double. Fair enough. Sure. Fair play. Um, but I still got my back knuckle off, right? And so that was kind of the point. Um, I can protect next turn or I can fly next turn to, to guarantee that I hit the wheezing. Um, the real key here, uh, I don't want to play to timer again. Like, uh, what's the point of playing to timer when you led to, like, uh, are, are in such a strong position, but like, um, there's a genuine chance that I might just not be able to KO this wheezing in the end game after it gets two stockpiles up, three stockpiles up. Um, I can freeze it with Nido King. That's another out, right? But like, I have Lovely Kiss. I have. I'm just gonna. I, I feel like I just want to switch the stack attack in just to say like, hey, I, this game is over. I've won the game. Um, so we did see. We did see. Funnily enough, that uh, that Toxic can hit through. So I'm going to just gonna protect Ice Beam. Um, just make sure I KO this Tangela, no matter what. Toxic can hit through Fly on Poison types. Very funny. Um, But, uh, yeah, this is, like, one of the funny situations. Like, if, yeah, okay. I mean, it's going to be 4v1 real soon. Um, part of me wants to attack. Part of me wants to just say, like, listen, you can't you can't win this and just stack attack. Uh, so that, uh, like, the, the safe play, the, the objectively correct way to win this game is to play to timer, right? Because he is stockpiling. He is going to be very annoying. Um, and if I have four Pokemon and, I, and he can't... Like his, his, he's relying on toxic damage, right? So if he's if he's relying on toxic damage and I continuously switch, then um, he can't do enough damage to me. Uh, like he has to just like keep clicking toxic here. Uh, I guess I will click wild charge once. This is a little bit of a greedy play, but like it, it, the game's kind of over, you know. Like um, I want to see how much damage this does first, and then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. But you know, uh, I could play for a critical hit. This ice beam actually is going to chunk this wheezing, I think. Um, I might just be able to, like, outright just get power through it anyways. Um, but yeah, there's the Toxic. And so the key here is trying to do as little... Uh, let him do as little Toxic damage as possible. Um, and so by that, I mean I'm going to switch out into Stack Attack, which just, like, you know, play the, play the long game, play the timer game. Um, worst case, Stack Attack will, will win in timer, most likely. Um, but, yeah, like, I... What can I say? Like, I think he knows that I know that he knows that I know that, like... That I can win on timer. I think he has to protect here anyway, so I'm gonna wild charge and I'm gonna switch out stack. Um, minimize the amount of poison damage I can do. He also can't effectively hit Nido King. Um, and also stockpile caps out of plus three. So like it's not even gonna get to plus six like you would expect, like you would hope. Um, Um, we'll see, we'll see. <sighs> oh, okay, and he just forfeits, yeah. So, fair enough. Fair play to Febzy. Uh, good games. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely go check out his channel again. One of the, not only one of the best players in the world, uh, but also one of the, the chillest guys, like, most, like, enjoyable content creators, Twitch, Twitch, most specifically Twitch streamers to watch, in my opinion. And so make sure to give him uh, a subscription, a like, a, uh, you know, a whatnot. Um, so, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed XDL week five. Fabzi was not going to be the one to take us down. Um, we'll have to see next week. I think we're playing a uh, gin next week. So that'll be fun too. Uh, we've got, we got a lot of games going on. Um, yeah. And uh, also make sure to subscribe to my channel. Of course, there is get three more team reports coming out for uh, Players Cup 4, and then we're going to move on to Series 10 content. Uh, it's going to be a good time. And yeah, till next time, I'll see you all later.